95.2 FM, cranking all the hits, commercial free, it's live on I-95, what's up, let's get right into it right now, we are on Interstate 95, that's right, on I-95 at a gas station where I work as gas man, and the show starts right now, this is a doozy, Tony Moschetto is here, I don't even know if he knows that I work here, wow, is anyone else seeing this? Tony Moschetto is here at the gas station walking in. Tony is a Boston stand-up comedy legend who I haven't crossed paths with in a while. And it looks like he's got his dog, too. This is wild. Wow. Up. Oh, he's coming in right now. Yeah, can I get 20 on pump number six? Is that? It's no Tony. way! No Dude. way! J- Greg Johnson? Greg Johnson? Dude, I am How you doing? so happy to see you and your dog! Thank you. We were out in our little, uh, we just went, we just came from the dog park. Amazing, dude. I work here, six to six. Nice. I didn't, well, since, wow. Wow. Okay, you sit, lay down. Lay down. Oh, you're talking to your dog right there. Yeah. I thought you were. Talking to me. Uh, is to your me. dog named Grumbles? Grumble, Sh- Grumble Shanks. Is that the best name for a dog? I love it of all time. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think it is the best name. It's original. It says uh, he. He looks like a Grumble Shanks too. You know. <laughs> he really. Uh, <laughs> no one. <laughs> everyone's like has these like. Uh, Hacky names, you know, like, like Brady or, <laughs> or uh, there's, there's one, there's a, a name Blue. A lot of people name their dogs Blue. I don't know why. There was a dog we took, we took Rumble to, uh, we, you know, we're going away. Me and my girlfriend going away, and uh, we want to, want to put, we want to put him somewhere to, for the, you know, to stay for the weekend or whatever, right? I love your dog. So we go to this. He's a he's a great dog. So we go to this place, and the lady uh, has this nice little yard, and she's, uh, she's trying to get him acclimated to the, the other dogs there. There's one big dog. He's like a husky or something, and he's like, he rules the roost, you know? And then she has this other little dog named Ralphie. He's like, <laughs> and Ralphie, all he wanted to do was hump Grumble Shanks. Oh, my gosh. And we're like, I don't know if we want to like leave him there for a weekend and have him get like raped, you know, like yeah, by another dog. So we just, uh, I think we're gonna pass on that place or like the last, you know, our last resort. I think that's fair. I think it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's I good mean, to pass. Yeah, that's a hard pass. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to watch. <laughs> it's, really, it's, it's really hard to watch because there's nothing you can do about it really oh it's like God. they're animals and they have to kind of he has to he's got to learn how to fend for himself yeah how long have you had grumble shanks a little over a year oh so was that like pandemic sort of you well i guess it was the end of the pandemic that we uh we, we always kind of wanted to get a dog but it's really hard to get a dog when you go through these animal shelters, he's not like a rescue dog or anything, but they really, I think they've gone overboard. Like they want like character references and they want to, <laughs> like, they, you know what they do? They're like, do you have a, a, a yard? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, they'll Google, they'll Google earth Whoa. your address. <laughs> and they're like, well, you don't have a fence. Well, how'd you know that? <laughs> Cause they can they start to, like, I mean, they're really intrusive in a way to let you know your background, and it's almost impossible to get a dog from a rescue if you if you're not already like a pet owner. Yeah, I think I knew somebody that they went and talked to the references, and then they didn't get it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. How much? Did, so, did you pay like a million dollars for Grumble Shanks? You don't have to say. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> it was pretty fair. It's pretty fair amount, you know. Yeah, I mean that's an amazing 
priceless dog right there. Grumble Shanks. He is. <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a, a script, uh, and the character is, I got a character named Grumble Shanks. Nice. Yeah. Is it a human or a dog? No, it's a half, it's a half poodle, half uh, Sasquatch. Oh, nice. That uh, sounds like my kind of movie. Yeah, so. But, uh. Oh. He, uh, uh, uh oh. Hey. So <laughs> he'll bark at uh, anything coming down the driveway. <laughs> I think there's a. All right, st stop, stop. Sorry about this, Greg. No, I love it. This Are you kidding? Podcast. I love it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he doesn't have the he doesn't have the podcast etiquette yet. Hey, 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 we're on the hey, come on, we're on the, on Greg Johnson's podcast now. <laughs> it's okay. We can't even have a serious conversation. I gotta be like talking about. It's all right. It's just a neighbor. It's okay. It's not. not gonna oh, hurt you. Not that gonna dog hurt. is so cute, dude. He, he, uh, he slept in with me today. Oh, my God. You know? That sounds like heaven. It, it, <laughs> he just got a haircut, so you, you haven't seen him in his, uh, in his fluffiness where he's total grumble shanks. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's grumble shanks, <laughs> but if you, saw, if you see a picture of him with his full, all his full fur out, <laughs> you're like, that's a grumble shanks right there. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. The last time you and I hung out, I think, was like 2010. And it was, this is so absurd. <laughs> it was in a cheesecake factory in Illinois. Oh, that's right. With Gary Gullman. Was Gullman there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was working at the uh, Zanies. I was at that's Zanies amazing. and you guys were... Uh, you guys are working uh, in Chicago as well, but uh, at a different club, right? Yeah, it was a cavernous club uh, inside a shopping mall. Oh, wow. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, we were so lucky. <laughs> Dude, I remember that. I remember that year because that, that I had a, t a little tour. That was like the first leg of my tour, right? Chicago. And I should have known, right, how it was going to go by just... <laughs> I was I was eating it the whole week at Zany's, like just eating it, and then and then I go on one of these runs. You know, uh, remember that guy? Uh, it was uh, his name's Chris Chris Wild. He did uh, South Bay comedy, and he and it was like you know like a Dave Tribble, you know the Tribble run. Yeah. Right. It was like that. Right. So I went to uh, Wyoming. Um, South Dakota, and uh, what else? it was Wyoming, South Dakota, and uh, what's, the other, what's the other state? They might have been, anyway, it was like eight <laughs> hours between gigs, oh. that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And, oh, man, I talk about, oh, talk about a hell, <laughs> hell run. <laughs> I walked in, in uh, Pier... South Dakota, I like walked like half the audience. I started talking about living at the beach in the middle of <laughs> the middle of the Wild West, and they were like, "What? What is this? It's my it's my material. It's where I li I grew up. I'm, the, I'm from the beach." And they're like, "I think one guy wanted to fight me." It was crazy. You're like, who lives near the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy it was beautiful beautiful scenery but i remember that yeah and that was like i it started off well you know seeing you guys yeah that was great that's right I, I i forgot about that that was probably the last time i saw you and it's weird because yeah like i mean goldman is a legend i was opening for him yeah. And I could have done that for the rest of my life. It's just that it's not feasible. There's no practicality in being like a opening act or a feature act for somebody. I mean, like, for example, that was him doing me a huge favor, obviously. Uh, and I appreciated it, but there's no like sustainability to that. Right. 
That yeah. was that was like probably the best weekend of my comedy life. It's like like the pressure's off. You're hanging out with Goldman and Tony. I mean, what could be better? That was uh, talking about cavernous. That that um, that cheesecake factory. <laughs> <laughs> it had it had like it was like a museum. It had like different wings. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Caesar's Palace. Yeah, a little much, you know, guys. <laughs> yeah, I just remember like. Gary Goldman wakes me up and he's like, we're going to go meet Tony at a cheesecake factory. And I'm like, this is the best day of my life. That was fun. <laughs> that was a good time, man. But you're still working the road. You did some main comedy recently, correct? Yeah. You know, I, I took some time off, you know. How's that uh, go? When did, you, when did you take time off? I took time off before the pandemic. Like, a, like maybe two, three years before, right? And then right before the pandemic started, I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get back at it, you know? <laughs> and then <laughs> like March 10th, uh, yeah, 2020. It was, it was, I was in LA in February, the end of February that year. And I was doing some sets out there and I'm like, oh, I'm going to, you know, when I get back, I'm going to hit it hard, you know? Little did I know, right? Little did, <laughs> or we knew. And then, uh, so I just kind of rode with that, right? You know? As, as everyone did. And then like last summer, I just, I don't know what it was, Greg. I think it's, uh, I missed the, you know, the live audience aspect of it, right? And being creative and writing and, and just uh, having that automatic feedback when you're up there. And uh, so, yeah, I get, like I think last August, I, I was officially back, you know. And, That's uh, great. So it's a, and the thing is, like, what I learned, you know, being away from it, I uh, I got less jaded when I was a, when I wasn't chasing it like I did before. So I was able now I'm able to enjoy other people, other comics, and not get all, you know. Yeah. Before I think it was just I think everyone falls into this trap, where it becomes competitive, where you just you want people to fail, <laughs> you want people yeah. to like eat it up there but um now it's it's different i can i can genuinely like enjoy my <laughs> night and 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 celebrate the our our craft you know and just have fun yeah so well it's tricky because i think maybe you get in a trap of wanting people to fail but also i find it funnier sometimes when people bomb so oh yeah i, mean, <laughs> I do i do enjoy watching people bomb in general well there's some guys, right? When they bomb, it is the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> it's fu it's the funniest thing to watch because of how they react to it. There's a guy, I don't know if you know him. He's kind of uh, more my class, I guess, or when I started out. Nick guy named Nick Costas. He was probably in L.A. when you started when you when you started doing comedy. And this guy Nick was just a legend, man. When he bombed, it was like you wanted him to bomb. <laughs> Because the way he, like the stuff he would say, he would turn, he would say, like, he would say to a guy like, I want to bend you over a stack of tires and fuck you up the ass. <laughs> like that was his retort. I want, I want to sick, I want to suck your dick so hard, your, your pee hole, <laughs> your pee hole come out of your, like, <laughs> like just, just like, these like personal <laughs> oh know, my god like stuff like that like th just to name a few uh he would he, the, he would that's how he would come at him and it was just so funny those guys it's like better for them maybe to bomb too some people have such good retorts with the audience it's like easier for them if they bomb yeah yeah exactly <laughs> one time i bombed so hard i was in uh and again this is like the year 2000 I went to Hampton Beach Casino, <laughs> and uh, I was asked to open up for who else but uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh, I was going to say Sha Na Na, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was waiting for you to say some like, obscure like, Sha Na Na or like, some, some guy that was like the, like the backup singer to one of like, a, the Temptations. <laughs> Casey and the Sunshine yeah. Band, and wow. I don't know, I don't know what their fan base is. I mean, at this point, they're all probably 
you know, kind of in their sixties and seventies and then too, and they did not take to, uh, <laughs> my five minutes of comedy. <laughs> And it was bad. Like you wouldn't even think they'd be mean people, but they were on that night. They were not into it. That's a tough room. Yeah. And why would you think that me, and I was probably 21 years old. Why, why would you book me? <laughs> you weren't even born yet. When he was like at his height of the disco era. You know what I mean? Like you weren't even. <laughs> you Like. <laughs> I should not be on the same bill. Right, you should. <laughs> Is that a connection, uh, a booking? Oh, yeah, because, man, the comedy connection would somehow book that. Yeah, wow. You're just reminding me. Oh, my God. Tony, I got to ask you, who do you think of when you think of Boston comedy? Like, other than you and I, yeah. who are the legends, <laughs> the legends of Boston of Bo comedy? I want to do a draft with you. Let's do okay. a draft. All right. I would say I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. <clears throat> well, but yeah. if we were going to draft and like we'll just go back and forth and I don't know. I guess the stipulation being uh with each of our teams we're going to start a stand-up comedy tour and uh who's uh, anyway, I don't know. The legends of <laughs> legends of Boston comedy. The legends of Boston comedy. That's a great that's a great question because Other than you and I. I mean you and I obviously. Oh, that's a given. That's a given. Yeah. We're the captains of the <laughs> Of our of our teams, our, our draft teams. Are there as many comedians in Boston now as there were 20 years ago? Or is it like yeah. there's more because of the internet or there's less I would of a say scene? There's, um, I would say there's just about as many comics, if not more, than, than there was when you left or you know, 20, when you started. Uh, definitely more when I started. Uh, there's less of a scene because there's no more comedy connection. There's no more club like a seven night a week club. Um, there's there's nothing in Cambridge. Yeah. You know, there's not there's not you know there's Knicks, but that's just a shadow of itself. And the way they book acts now, you know, they I think they book a headliner, and, and the headliner has to bring uh, set the show up and pay people or whatever, and they get the door or whatever like that. So it's totally a different model nowadays. There's a lot of like little shows popping around, you know, mm -hmm, like one nighters, good. you know, and it's actually, those are pretty good. Um, you just got to kind of get into the loop. Yeah. How does the big room in the hotel, the Laugh Boston, how does that stay open? I mean, I guess they do well. That's kind of like a comedy connection used to be, right? Yeah. Uh, it's similar, but, you know, I think because they get, they they were able to book, you know, well known acts. Oh my god! But I look at those bills and I'm like, who's well known? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not even. I'm not criticizing uh, that that venue. I'm saying like, wow, the world's passed me by. I think a lot of people are on like TikTok and stuff, and they get popular that way. That's why I haven't heard of them. I think that's. I think you're right. I think it's social media uh, influencers that are comics. Yeah, do you these... think a place like that has like a 10-year lease on that room? So it's kind of just like they're just <laughs> in it to win it. I don't who knows? Who knows? I don't I don't know, man. I mean, I went there once just to see a show. <laughs> Wait, I have not... I, I'm laughing because I feel like that place has been around 10 years now, and I love how I've been there once too. I think I've been there once I, in my life. <laughs> it was uh I didn't want to go. Uh, it was a it was a Christmas <laughs> gift from my girlfriend's nephew. <laughs> So and that's like, great because it's like, that, yeah. To me, you're like a legend, and I just love that a nephew would give you, a, hey, let's go see, uh, yeah. you know, fucking the guy from Guy Code on MTV at Laugh Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some guy that got uh, he has a heckling video that went yeah. viral. <laughs> you know, no one, no one shows anything that's any good, right? It's always yeah. like them bombing, yeah. or get, getting angry with the audience. Oh yeah, let's, let's go see that guy. <laughs> or you ever, I, sometimes I see it, and it's one of their bits, and they drop in laughs. So it's just clearly like a laugh track. It's oh really? That's insane. anyway. You so, went to Laugh Boston. I went to Laugh Boston to see a show. To see a show, I saw uh, Soder, Dan Soder. Uh, there was a guy that was in the middle that was, I forget his name, but he was just like, 
he was he was funny. He, he, was, he had <laughs> really edgy material, and I li- I liked I liked him because of you know his material and kind of reminded me, uh, you know, guys taking risks on stage. It was just really different, you know. So I liked that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, going back to your uh, the draft. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The we can get into that. Legends. Please. Yeah, I'll give you the first pick. Legends of Boston comedy. I'm gonna go with uh, stand up comics. I'm gonna go with a guy that unfortunately passed away, but he was one of the definitely a legend. Uh, Kevin Knox. I would go with. Oh, nice. That guy. Nice. He was. Oh uh, my gosh, I could talk about him forever. He was the best man. He was yeah one of, a, one of a kind that guy so memorable and uh one of a kind what about patrice o'neill i guess i could yeah. draft him as my oh. first picked that's a great pick i was thinking of him too because he uh i um i remember one of the earliest times or the, maybe the first or second time he was on stage oh going wow up there and like bombing Amazing. You know, didn't really have any material at, at all, but and then I saw him like a few months later, and it was like night and day. He had that Malcolm XXXL joke, <laughs> yeah. right? And it was like it killed. And he had and and that was kind of like you know all he just needed like a bit, and then he started finding his voice, and then he just took off. And I remember like I gave him a ride. I used to give him rides once in a while around the city and he was he, he was like shitting on me he's like how much material do you have <laughs> and i was like honest i'm like well i have 20 minutes that i know works he's like i you're lazy man <laughs> 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 and he's like just give me shit and then he was like kind of right you know he's I'm like yeah well i should maybe i should have more material oh you that's know? so interesting yeah yeah dude i feel like in like like a few years before he died when he got very famous there was an article about him in the paper and like he was like referencing one of the club owners and then the club owner was quoted in the article still shitting on him he was like oh patrice always goes over his time and i just remember being so shocked by that i'm like dude they reached out to you for a quote about (laughs) this comic and you're like still talking that he like went long in his sets i mean like it's just a funny thing to reference. I don't know. He he never got his due. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I he rubbed. He definitely had uh, uh, rubbed some people the wrong way, you know. Yeah. Especially like bookers and other other comedians because he didn't give a fuck what he said, you know. And yeah, uh, I think he's. I think when people said, you know, you go over your time, and he's like, well, how much, how how am I also going to get stage time in this town? Yeah, I know. That was like I, his response, yeah. you know. And He's not I, wrong. It's like sometimes I look back at how diligent I was at getting off stage when they lit me, and I'm like, "What was I afraid of? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how long do I have? Oh, okay, seven minutes. Oh, okay." Did you ever get yelled at by someone because you went over your time? Like, uh, at- you know, I probably did. Thank you for asking. I'm sure that I probably did, but I was always such a people pleaser. Nothing really sticks out. I do remember the guy at the the club in Cambridge used to get mad just in general that the show would go over because he had certain time constraints. And by the way, you said there's nothing in Cambridge. I saw a uh, GoFundMe for that club because they need 100K to get back on their feet. Yeah. And and Tony, I noticed that you hadn't given yet. I haven't given. Not yet. (laughs) I'm waiting. I'm waiting a little longer because I want to be the guy that puts him over the top. You know what I mean? I want to be... I just want to write, you know, when they're like $100 away, I'm just going to give $100 and write, you're welcome. And then see what happens. And then maybe I'll get the first spot in the history of that club. I'm praying that he gets the money. You know what I mean? Because that could be a good thing, but, you know. It was supposed to open last fall. I know. Just got delayed in a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you give a hundred dollars, honestly, to that GoFundMe, one of the stipulations is you get to perform five minutes of comedy. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not making that up. I think that was one of the things. 
I <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta look at it. Okay. I wanna Anyway, at Legends of Boston Comedy Draft. Right. Now we haven't put together <laughs> A show stopping tour yet because both our our first picks were <laughs> no longer with us. But uh, uh, you go ahead. You you pick next. Uh, who Legends of Boston stand up comedy draft? Okay, uh, you'd have to go with. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is really important. I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm sitting there worried. I'm like, am I gonna am I gonna yeah. piss anyone off by by these names? Oh, I'm about to... <laughs> no, it's, I'm not recording. No, no. Okay. I love. Yeah, I, I, I refer to like a club in Cambridge. I'm like speaking in code as if it matters. Right. Anyway, the studio. Um, there are no famous draftable comedians. I'm gonna have to gonna go with uh, Dane. There you go, Dane Cook. Uh, he was, he was one of the, the guys from, like my class. Uh, you know, because I hung out with Dane and Patrice and those guys, right? Those. Yeah. Guys. And he was like the first dude to really. To break out, you know, that uh, besides, I guess in my generation, you know, pre, I mean, post, you know, Stephen Wright and those guys. Oh, my that, God. And those, that go, those, you know, the Ding Ho, you know, so yeah. I'm going to go Dane. I mean, Dane was like selling out arenas for like five years in a row in the early 2000s. Yes. Oh my God! I opened for him at Conti Forum, Ooh. <laughs> at Boston <laughs> College in an arena. Nice. Yeah, that went better than the Casey and the Sunshine. Pack, I was going to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that was... was like Crush City. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I think two minutes, two minutes before I was introduced, Dane Train looked me in the eyes and he goes, "No swearing." <laughs> you just messing with you. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I had about, you know, seven minutes and it was in my head at that point. Like there was going to be no improv. And I think I had one bit where I swore and I thought, oh, I'm going to do it anyway, because I don't think he's going to watch me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, 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 I got the understanding that like if I'm Dane, I might say don't swear because I don't want you to be filthy. But like my act was very PG, you know? Yeah. There was a guy, uh, Jim Laletta. Oh, remember Jim Laletta? Jim He'd, 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 he'd go, right before you go on, he'd go, don't say and. <laughs> <laughs> he'd do stuff like, don't say and. I say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was. Okay. Can't recall I ever got lambasted for going over the light doing stand-up, but one time at Nick's, he was the headliner, and he ripped me because... I tried out this bit where I brought somebody from the audience on stage. <laughs> and it's like, I thought that he was a little over the line with how angry he got at the time. However, yeah. looking back, it makes sense. You don't want somebody to bring, like you don't want to bring the audience on stage, really. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted a heads up. He thought, oh man, I couldn't, after you do that, I, I can't get them back in it. But I was just trying to kill yeah, you were just trying to be funny. And... <laughs> yeah, I was trying to not make him mad. Yeah, but... you're trying to. Yeah. I'm just. <laughs> it had the opposite effect. I'm trying. I'm trying to make people laugh. I was trying so hard, and I failed because he was. <laughs> did it? Did it work though? When mad. you brought some, when the. Yeah, and I think so. In the moment, I was shocked that he was angry at me. I was like, I, I it killed. <laughs> But he was more thinking about himself. Um, yeah, so uh, Dane Train started at Knicks. Yeah. Dane Cook, great first choice. I'm going to go, okay, my pick. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy that a lot of people go to when they talk about Boston comedy. Uh, he's a guy that, he's one of the only guys that could compete with Dane Cook in terms of drawing an audience, I feel like, and in terms of name recognition, and that's Jay Leno. Mm, wow. I mean, he's from Andover. Yeah. Maybe a lot of people don't think about him in terms of Boston comedy, but I know the people in Boston kind of count him as their own. Yeah. That's a good so, one. Yeah. I'll go with Leno. That's a good one, Leno. That's, uh, that's uh, well, Johnstone, I, uh, I admire you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing a starting five. So you pick, okay, oh, Leno and Dane. Those are our centers. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so power. We're going power forward next, or guards. <laughs> <Yeah. 
And I mean, listen, we're talking about big names. There's a lot of classic guys like, you know, Kenny Rogerson, those type of guys who maybe don't make the starting five. But anyway, let's continue I'm this just draft. To, I like yeah. this. I don't want to keep you forever, too, by the way. No, it's okay. What are, I'm, I, I'm enjoying <laughs> myself. <laughs> I don't talk to people. All right, so who uh, I'm trying to think of uh like there's so many like you, there's obvious names right i guess uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna go steven wright steven wright because that guy put boston on the map oh definitely i mean uh, one of the most legendary Boston comedy stories that people love to tell is how he was on the tonight show with Johnny Carson. And they like rolled out a TV, a catch a rising star. They're like, yeah. they're like, we had one TV and we bought it for that occasion. It's a black and white, yeah, it's a little black, black and white, white TV. <laughs> no one would do that now. It's because they had three channels back then. It was like 10 million, hundred million people were watching the tonight show. Yeah. Cause there's no, right. You couldn't go on YouTube the next day and, Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, how they Fucking live? Fucking a. How, how they, did they live? How did they live back then? Uh, sometimes I miss it. I wish there was like no cell phones, just the landline. I still have old notebooks, right? Little date books, and names in the back with their numbers. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like valuable. Yeah. Like, I'm like oh, I got Robbie Prince's number. I still have. Uh, business cards from I collect like I don't know I never threw yeah. anything away and I have like I have business cards from people I have like uh, I met Dimitri Martin wait that's so weird I I was what? just gonna say I, I was just gonna say I recently threw out a bunch of business cards because I moved and one of them was Dimitri Martin oh it was oh that's crazy go ahead well, go he, ahead he wrote down on a piece of paper his name and number. So it's like, and this is from years ago when I lived in New York, and I, 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 start, I saw him when he started out too. I saw all these guys. I saw yeah. so many guys start out, and now I'm like, they're all famous. Oh, I you know? know, man. I mean, when that first happened, I mean, that's like a mind fuck, right? I mean, you're talking about guys like Dane and Patrice. It's like, yeah, it's just crazy. Like I've saw so many guys that are famous their first times on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I saw so many guys perform their early sets and when they were like, they were totally not who they are. Yeah. You, know, you, you saw them, you saw them find their voice and then, yeah, and then one night you go in, you see them and all of a sudden they're killing and you're like, wow. There's just this weird thing where somebody's just, you know, a regular comic, and then the next minute they're selling out Madison Square Garden. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It is weird. And it's like not, and there's not really uh, much difference. Uh, it's so subtle, the difference from, you know, uh, them being in a club, you seeing them in a, in a, like a really small situation. Small, you know, like I'm trying to think of the words here. Uh, yeah, because you know I, mean? I mean, like, in a yeah. club, like in a club situation, I guess. There's really something to comedy in like a small place under like you know 200 people versus in those big arenas. Because in the big arenas, there's it loses some magic. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm like, I'm gonna, I, I like, I'm talking like, yeah, I've done so many arenas, you know. It's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but when, I just think it's like a, a comedy club. If you're gonna build the ideal comedy club, it seats like, like one to two hundred people. There's low ceilings. It feels like a very intimate room. Yeah. And when somebody's killing, everyone is like keeled over, laughing, experiencing the same rush of like seeing a guy kill whereas if you're in like an arena and again i've <laughs> <laughs> i could tell like from personal experience <laughs> like the con like the conti farm the conti farm yeah. and, and the ham and the and the we'll call casino the hampton beach uh casino is 
Yeah, by the I, you know, I am I will be back at the Hampton Beach Casino soon, and I am running a weekly open mic out of Conti Forum in uh, Chester Hill, Massachusetts. <laughs> who we, gonna, gotta, we draw about twelve hundred people a week. Who you, who you gonna open for uh, at the Hampton Beach? <laughs> I think I was invited back. Oh wait. Yeah. I'm having flashbacks. I was invited back after Casey and the Sunshine Band. That's almost the funniest part of it. I bombed so hard that the crowd at Casey and the Sunshine Band were not only booing me, they started chanting, KC, KC. <laughs> oh and then, like, mo- like probably three months later, I get asked to go back there, and it was like a Lucy, Lucy Loveless show. It was like a country show. Uh, and they're like, yeah, we heard about you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna yeah, want the country. The yeah. country band was like, "We gotta have them. We gotta have them. They're gonna be chanting for us." Uh, yeah. So about seven minutes into the this <laughs> comedian set, like you haven't seen a crowd so happy yeah. to see your music than the one that has to suffer through Greg Johnson before you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. That was- <laughs> that's like you gotta take pride in that you know like yeah you know what uh you're not gonna have more happier fans than you're about to <laughs> to see you <laughs> by the time i get done be ready <laughs> just be ready to go on yeah i show up at the venue they're like do exactly the same set you did last time. yeah <laughs> They're like, we need you to bomb even harder, if possible. The bigger the bomb, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. (laughs) Okay, so far. Excuse me. We got Dane Cook. You got your team is Dane Cook and Stephen Wright. I got Leno. And here's my second pick. Boston stand-up comedy draft. This is a big one. Joe Rogan. Wasn't he a Boston guy? He was. I mean, I, there's probably no bigger draw in the world right now. I, I don't know what his audience, like, I feel like his audience gets exaggerated. I don't listen to his pod. I don't care. Uh, but I know that he's a very popular comedian, obviously. Joe Rogan, shout out. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one, man. I mean, I remember when he uh, used to do Nick's, hanging out. Uh, I hung out one night. At Dominic's is this place across the street from. It's not there anymore, I don't think. It was a pizza place. <clears throat> it was a pizza, and they had a bar, and basically all like after hours. All the uh, you you, there would like pimps be hanging out, prostitutes, like every walk of life, <laughs> would be at this place. It was one of the. It was the best place on earth. They had great pizza, good slices. And you never know, you, ne- you just never know, like, who you're going to run into there. Yeah. And we used to go, and when you work Knicks, you know, you'd, you'd go, all the comics used to go over there. And I remember him writing that bit, remember that bit he did about when that show Life Goes On, when that, if that gets canceled? Do you remember him doing that bit? No, I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets canceled, like, uh. Um, and, and, uh. The guy Corky, the guy that plays Corky, like his reaction. So afraid. Classic Rogan. It was yeah, it was classic. Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can't believe my team right now is Leno and Rogan. I don't know. I I don't have to pick. You got Leno and Rogan. That was a good pick. I got man. Leno and Rogan. You got Dane and uh, Steve Wright. Who's your next one? Let's go. Legends uh, of Boston comedy. Legends of Josh. Boston comedy. Uh, I'll go Burr. Nice I go one. Burr. That was gonna go Burr. I mean, talk about a guy who's been funny forever, and now he like sells out Red Rocks. Yeah, he, he does an arena. Talk about arenas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like for a while, he was the guy you were rooting for because he never got his just do, and now, I mean, I'm not saying he even. Gets his just do. I I think he he does very well for himself though. He's a legend, that guy. Big time, heart one of the hardest working guys. Um, I, yeah, I remember uh, another guy that I just 
remember hanging out at the clubs in, in, you know, in the early 90s when you started doing it. I think I remember the first time he was at the club at Stitches, just kind of lurking about by himself. Amazing. You know, and uh, you didn't talk, you really didn't talk to anybody if they were new back then, right? Yeah. You just kind of like, you, you waited till they got on stage and like, what, what are these guys, what do they got? And he had like this one joke, you know, because uh, that joke, the early joke about, because <clears throat> he was a dental hygienist in, in uh, you know, 20 years of, uh, of the neglect, uh, a tic tac doesn't. A tic tac doesn't. So I'm doing. I'm not doing the joke justice, but it, the, the, you know, you know, yeah. a tic tac doesn't uh, cure 20 years of neglect. And, <laughs> right. It was just a funny bit, and like after that, it's like, oh, okay, this guy. And then you, and you know, people talk to him. You know, I think yeah, if he that's bombed, actually, you know, if he bombed, you wouldn't a, really. Uh, yeah. I know. I've had that like. Especially like the few times I've performed in uh, L.A., it's just like a phenomenon where like <laughs> I'm talking to people afterwards, and then I'm like, "Oh yeah, they were completely ignoring me before I went on stage and did well." <laughs> yeah, and then they're just like so nice to you. Yeah, after they see that uh, you do well. Anyway, you, Bill if, Burr. If you're funny, yeah, yeah, which I always am. So. Except for when I opened for Casey Shana. and such, I've been. And, yeah, Shana Na <laughs> in 2000. That's who you can open for next, Shana Na. <laughs> Coming out of retirement, I'm opening for Shana Na at the Conti Forum. Nice. Um, I guess my next pick, this is going to get hard because we each have, I have three more picks, you have two more picks. I'm going to go with Dennis Leary. He's just a guy that's been iconic Boston for a long time. I think at his height. He was probably selling out big theaters. I don't know what he's doing now. I don't think he's doing stand up now. Actually, I I, now I'm feeling bad about picking him because wasn't he? He had a bad reputation around these parts. But regardless of that, Dennis Leary, icon. I'm putting him on my team. Yeah, I think he um, he rubbed. Yeah, there was some uh, friction about stealing jokes early on, but I think the parties in in question uh, squashed it eventually. Yeah. So. But that's a good pick. I mean, he, uh, I remember those spots on MTV and smoking yeah. cigarette stuff. Yeah. That was so popular. Again, it goes back to what that was the advent of cable TV. So a mm -hmm. lot of people watched MTV. My next pick, it's going to blow your mind, Greg. I can't wait. David Cross. Oh, that's a great one. David Cross. Dude, I love. David Cross so much. I could talk about it a lot, but I love that guy. He's a killer comic. People think he's like a certain way, but then when you see him do stand up, I think you get a different impression of him. And yeah, he's the greatest. You know, David Cross had a dog that I think he named Red Sox. And he told me <laughs> it was so when he lived in uh, New York City, whenever he had to leave the dog park, he could be like, come on, Red Sox. <laughs> it's pretty funny and he's he's serious too like that's great it's like something i followed up on him every time i'd see him and he'd be like yeah no that's that's real so that's hilarious. kind of funny yeah that's killer David oh shit cross comedy man what yeah that was like john benjamin john benjamin um sam cedar oh yeah guy i think gustus was in that for a little bit Man, like, I really, I'm at a loss for who to pick. Like, I guess, I don't know. Maybe I'll go for my next pick. I think, jeez. Lenny Clark. Good one. I mean, you just got to pick Lenny Clark at some point. He's such an icon of the region, an icon of stand-up comedy. I mean, I don't know, man. I, Lenny Clark's interesting because I've watched some of his sets, like the ones from the Young Comedian special. Yeah. HBO and... uh it hasn't aged that well. But anyway, it's really great to have him on my team. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good uh, acquisition. Uh, he, <laughs> I was tempted to pick Joe List. Ooh, that's a... Because, I mean, Joe, I, I mean, today, Joe certainly draws, certainly got a great career going. 
Maybe the oh. maybe our last pick we should we should pick from that generation. Sure. Yeah. You know, like there's Listy, uh, Kaplan. Oh yeah, MYQ Kaplan. Yeah, Kaplan. Uh, uh, dude, you know what's funny? You mentioned Soder. I got a text message like three weeks ago, and he goes, "I'm listening to some show that Dan Soder has. Oh, it's called The Bonfire. Is that on your radar? The Bonfire. Yeah, I think it's Dan Soder and it's Big J Okerson. Is oh, this yeah. on your radar? I've heard of this. Yeah, and it's, there was a falling out, right? Oh, maybe I don't even know. But the, he, the thing that I, the piece of information I got is this guy I know was listening to the bonfire, and he heard Joe List on there doing my bit. He was quoting me. He was shouting me out. He was complimenting me okay. according to this guy. So there's a, it's nothing but love there. And then the guy sent me the clip, and I was like, I don't even want to listen to this. In fact, I don't want to even know that someone's doing my bit on the bonfire <laughs> lose my number <laughs> no i didn't get that harsh with them but i you know what do you what am i to make of that i i mean it's nice that joe would shout me out so i think that's thanks for uh that. uh very nice that's flattery i mean I, that's res i think that's respect for you for your comment <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> although i don't think he knows about the hampton beach casino uh gig <laughs> if he had <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that was the uh, maybe that was the clincher, you know. It was like, oh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's great. Joe Liss is a good member of the team. Yeah, Joe Liss. I actually have one guy I haven't mentioned. He'll be my last pick, I guess. You have two more picks, though. I do. I, I thought I had one. Oh yeah, you have one more. One more. Sorry. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of from that that ilk. That generation of lists. It's hard. Yeah, it's like. There's Joe, there's uh, Kaplan, there's Shane Moss. Who did. Well, you know what? Um, I mean, there's Gullman. Yeah, Gullman's a great pick. I'm going to go with Gullman. Yeah. I'm going to go with Gullman. Because he, yeah. All, you know, all these guys had their moment. And I think that Gullman worked really hard over the years, and then like just a few years ago with that Great Depression, that that yeah. special he had on on HBO. I think that was like his, you know, his moment, and from and that's propelled him to to the next level. You know what I mean? And it's like you you can't like as far as stand ups go, like so consistent with his material, his voice. You know, um, it's so distinct, you know, and it's so much fun. You just love listening to the guy. And he's yeah, like that. Dude. He's like that off stage too. He's just like a genuine dude. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, the greatest. Oh, the greatest guy. Shout out Gullman. I think we're full. I think our teams are full. You had yep. Cross, Gullman, Kevin Knox, Bill Burr, Stephen Wright, and Dane Cook. Yeah. Wow. Pretty much a flawless draft by you, Tony. That's a stunning lineup and pantheon of Boston stand-up comedy legends. You, you wouldn't want to miss that show. I think you have one more pick. I have one more pick. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many guys we haven't mentioned. There's a ton. Of Boston comedy legends. And it depends on how you're judging these teams. You judge by different criteria. There's so many nominees like like steve sweeney and sweeney but uh <laughs> so i can't think of any sweeney and sweeney but i want to put eugene merman on there oh, and yeah. here's why i mean it's actually obvious why eugene merman undeniable killer comedian and i think he was one of a kind in boston around 2000 he would destroy all the time same within new york and he was unique. He seemed to broaden the spectrum of what a Boston comedian could be. All that stuff. And he's the star of one of the most beloved TV shows of all time, Bob's Burgers, where he plays a character based on him, named after him, performed by him, written for him. He's basically Bart Simpson 2.0. He is iconic. Eugene Merman, gotta be on my team. He's the best. Honorable mention, Steve Sweeney. 
Wow. So to recap, here's my team, and I think I got you beat, Tony. It's Lenny Clark and Eugene Merman. Naturally, they'll bunk well together. Dennis Leary, Joe Rogan, and Jay Leno. That's a good start in five right there. It's going to be quite a tour bus. That's quite a torgasm, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> torgasm. 